Everyone makes mistakes, but I might have made some of the stupidest mistakes in music production, and you might have made them too. Hi, my name's Drew Grit, and many months ago, I seen a YouTube video about the worst mistakes everyone made as a kid playing Pokemon, and that really resonated with me, because as an eight-year-old, I used to get my ass handed to me 30 times a day playing Emerald, because I refused to use anything but my grass-type starter to fight the fire gym. Shout out my homie Saptile. But more importantly, this got me thinking about the mistakes I made when I started music production, and wow are they bad. I was out here making donkey tier production mistakes look like an Olympic sport. So here we are, this is my top six mistakes I made when I started producing music. I hope you enjoy my pain. Number one, no EQ, no compression. Yo bro, do you not use EQ on your tracks? Nah bro, EQ is for people that make mistakes. I don't make mistakes, I make straight heaters. I'm out here supplying more heat than British gas. Interesting. I don't notice any compression either. Nah, compression sounds too much like depression for me bro. My tunes are good vibes only. Obviously I don't have to describe why neglecting EQ and compression is stupid, but one thing I will say is, if you're just jamming, dropping in loops, trying different ideas in the MIDI keyboard, that is like the only time I'd say do avoid EQ and compression, because you can very easily get sucked out of the creative zone and into the technical side by like chasing the frequency for 20 minutes and then losing that creativity that you had. We've all probably fallen victim to that at some point. So remember kids, stay in school, don't do drugs, use EQ and compression. I believe that's called the holy trinity, but it could be wrong. Number two, pre-delay on reverb. I screwed up every single reverb for probably the first two years because I didn't understand what pre-delay was. Every time I dropped a reverb preset onto a track in Ableton, I would see that pre-delay knob and put it right down as low as possible and be like, no, excuse me, sir. I ordered reverb, not delay. Completely unaware that pre-delay is an essential part of how a reverb works. Sweetwater defines pre-delay as, pre-delay is a parameter found in reverb processors. It refers to the amount of time between the original dry sound and the audible onset of early reflections and reverb tail. Carefully adjusting the pre-delay parameter makes a huge difference in the clarity of a mix. For example, a longer pre-delay will move the reverb tail out of the way of the vocals, making them much more present and understandable. And if you still don't understand it, I have this super scientific diagram to demonstrate. So that's without pre-delay and with pre-delay. Basically, the gap the pre-delay provides is important in conveying the size of the space and distinguish the reverb from the signal of the instrument. And without appropriate pre-delay, you'll have an absolute audio mud bath of a mix. I guarantee not everyone watching this will have known what pre-delay is. So since you owe me one, you might as well subscribe. Number three, genre standard practices. This one is just ignorantly stupid. Say I wanted to make some modern R&B vibes, for example like SZA. Instead of looking up how to do that, I would just open a project, pick a random BPM, like 200, grab some Garth Brooks country guitar, and some Jeff Mills doof doof techno drums, and add them together. And wonder why it sounds like absolute garbaggio, which if you're an uncultured swine, means absolute dog shit in Italian. The more you know. Number four, not putting stuff out. When you start out with music production, your beats are probably gonna sound like they were made by somebody with no ears. Or like everyone's least favorite character from Friends, Ross, playing the keyboard, mixed with everyone's least favorite character from Friends, Ross, playing the bagpipes. <laughs> And that's okay, that's nothing to be ashamed of. But ideally, you'd like to get past that point and be putting out decent tunes before you put them out to the world. However, it's a fine line between that and waiting too long. The thing with music production is, you're always improving. So the chances of you looking back on what you did last year and not liking it are pretty high. But that's a good thing because it's showing growth. However, far too many people fall into the trap of not releasing, myself included. So try your best to avoid it and put stuff out. Because realistically, how are you gonna build a career if you're not putting stuff out? Mumbo number five, working with other artists. Okay, so now you're at the point where you're making good songs, you're posting them online, and you're talking to people, trying to make contacts and friends. You meet someone and both parties like what the other is doing and are super confident that together they're gonna hit a billion trillion streams with this collab. Stop right there, contain the excitement. Don't get me wrong, it's great making music friends online and trying to put out a song together, but you cannot assume that the track will ever see the light of day until you can press play on it on Spotify. It's like that old saying, when you assume you uh oh yeah when you assume 
you make a dick out of the both of us. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, at the independent level, you have to accept that eight out of 10, maybe nine out of 10 tracks are probably not gonna come out with people. And that's not really anyone's fault. Life gets in the way and nine to five gets in the way. They're not happy with how the song is right now. They wanna make it better and it just never comes out. And you just have to accept that. Like I've had people tell me this song's gonna blow up. We're gonna get the music video recorded on the moon because the bars are so hot they would melt the ozone layer. But instead it's just melting the hard drive. It's been sat on for 18 months. But as they say, it is what it is. Number six. Every day is training day. All right, so I switched it up for the last one to show that you're always gonna be learning and you're never gonna stop making mistakes. Now listen closely, cause this is some life changing advice that you will not find anywhere else. If you're building Ikea furniture and you don't have a hammer, do not use a guitar paddle. Yes, this may sound self-explanatory, but I made this mistake this month. And this week I tried to use said pedal and did it work? Nah. Is it fixable if you take it apart? Also nah. It is 100% El Busto. So there you have it. If you liked this video, give it a like. And rumor has it that pressing the subscribe button makes you handsome, but you'll have to investigate that for yourself. Also, let me know in the comments any of your mistakes. Have you made any of the same ones that I did? Any better ones? What's the funniest mistake you've ever made? This is only video number three, and we're closing in on 100 subs and 1,000 views on the first video, which is about a sick free plugin that nobody seems to know about, and the response from that's been great. You guys have all been amazingly kind, and I'm thankful for every one of you. And the reason I said we are getting close to 100 subs is because this isn't my channel, this is our channel. You know, Soviet thing. <laughs> but yeah, here's the links to the other two videos I've made. Hope you enjoy them, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.